and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the Ask Video Mail for the week of April 8th, 2013. Welcome to the site to the new members and welcome back to the old members. Don't forget the Ask Video Mail is your chance to get your question in air in character animation. We're gonna go with it. You know what? We're just gonna go with it. Character animation or performance. Uh, answered in a video just like this one, but I need your question if I'm going to answer it, of course. So please send your questions to webmaster at kennyroy.com. I go through all the questions and I answer the ones that uh, will help the most people. Uh, there's no such thing as a stupid question and it is the best way to get the most out of the site. Whew, man, barely made it through, but you know what? Mistakes happen. You just gotta let the show go on. Um, I'm wearing a, uh, a Viking t-shirt. Um, this is the uh, t-shirt that I got for the Warrior Dash. Um, you may notice my brand new metal over here. Or maybe you don't notice that now I have... Uh, I've done five mud runs now. I'm very proud of that. Uh, training hard. Um, I've lost about 15 pounds and uh, feeling a lot better um, in my body um, ever since my back injury. So um, very proud about that. So I'm going to sport the t-shirt for today. Um, collabs, uh, if you're curious, you should check out collabs.arconics.com. Um, things are getting really exciting. I'm going to be accepting the 20th and 21st um, animator to the online. I'm going to be accepting the 9th and 10th animator to the on-site collabs. And there's only 12 spots for on-site and 24 for online. So uh, <laughs> it, it, it is going to fill up. It is definitely going to be full. So if you're um, in a program right now, you're just not getting what you thought you were going to get out of it. If you just graduated, or if you're a junior animator between jobs and you want to get on an amazing project and work with some amazing pe people and learn some more, um, then Collabs is for you. So check out collabs.arconics.com. But um, I am so excited. There are so many interesting and amazing th and new things happening in the industry already surrounding this project. So that's very exciting. Check out collabs.arconics.com. You may notice that uh, CG Spectrum went ahead and they changed their uh, ads. Um, the top banner is the same, but the side banner, um, you may see the Rent a Mentor program. Uh, KennyRoy.com members get 10% off. Uh, the Rent-A-Mentor program. You get basically your own personal mentor. Here on KennyRoy.com you have me through the video mails and you have access to me uh, you know by email and by uh, you know through the forums and that kind of thing but the Rent-A-Mentor program is like having a professional animator at your side. So check that out if you're looking for some extra training. Um, it's a great uh, opportunity for you to be working one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with a professional animator. The, uh, I think that that's uh, it for news. It's just such an exciting time. I, I'm, I'm counting the days till collab starts, but I'm also um, really freaking out because it is a lot to set up, but um, it's gonna be fantastic. So I appreciate all your support on that. And I hope you're having fun with the site. I know I am. Uh, just so you know, uh, KennyWay.com will continue. There will just be, will just be going forth and, and moving forward with uh, KennyWay.com stuff. Um, there's no, uh, no interruption to the, uh, the training that's going on here. So uh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about when collab starts. You're not going to get anything anymore. Uh, on the contrary, you're probably going to get um, even a little bit more. So uh, that is awesome, possum, jawsome. All right, so let's uh, get to the question. It's an interesting one. It made me think for a long time. Um, it's, it's kind of a little bit of a workflow, also a little technical. And uh, so uh, take a look. I think you'll like it. So um, this person actually drew a, a, a picture as well to explain their problem, and I'll show you that. Um, it's a little rough, but uh, it, it's no big deal. I'll, I'll show you that anyway. And um, I, I thought about this for a long time, very long time actually, and um, I only have found, uh, I, I really think that there's only a couple ways to do this automatically. One is to make sure that, um, and this is the workflow part, okay? You need to make sure that while you're blocking that you understand and are keeping track of everything that is 
um, that you're, you're putting into your animation. That's why it's good to work with the graph editor open so you can see the curves as they are creating and constantly jump into the graph editor and reframe it and just like look at what's happening with all the channels. Um, especially if you block in step mode just to see how things are even uh, starting to time out uh, in your scene. But also knowing that uh, whatever you're putting into those poses um, whatever channels they are or whatever, um, whatever poses they are and the position of the character in the world, if those things are linked up or, or, or linked together, then you have, uh, you have only a couple of ways that you can get that um, pose um, to actually move, okay? Um, there are, um, so the first way is not the way I'm going to show you because um, the way I'm going to show you is, is a lot quicker and a lot simpler and it's for simpler characters and simpler poses. But basically the first way is to use pose libraries and make sure that your character has some sort of way of, of um, retaining a pose within the object space of like the master controller. So what that means is, is that if you position your character, um, let, me, let me draw an example for you. So if you have a character and um, the character is just standing, okay? And let's say, just say that uh, you have, you, you move them using the root, okay? And the IK feet. Okay, and let's say their arms are FK right now. That makes it really easy because if you move the root and the feet, and the, the, then the arms move along with you, right? But if you want him, let's say he jumps into this position, right? If you want him and then jumps out of this position, right? If you want to, in fact, let me show you the picture right now. So this is what um, the animator drew. Um, the top one is the, what was first blocked. So it's a bouncing ball, and it comes over here, and it bounces, and then it bounces over the box. But what they wanted was for it to come and bounce on the box, okay, and then, and then leave, okay? So, uh, and they also said that they're trying to fix it in the graph editor, but they can't. And I wouldn't say that the graph editor is where you would fix this. You can, but it's a little bit more intuitive and uh, automatic to fix it um, in panel, um, especially with the new tools in Maya 2013 and 2014. So, at any rate, if you imagine this guy is the bouncing ball, and there's a box right here, and you wanted him to actually land on the box, then you need to... Um, you need to have a pose library tool that allows you to put a pose into the character and it's based on either the position of the, the, the world mover or the master control, okay? And most, most really good pose libraries uh, understand that and they do that, okay? So you'd be able to um, save this pose Normally it saves it as like a button in the shelf, right? And then you'd be able to just move him up here and then load the pose and then whoop, he would turn into, you know, the same pose that you just had. Um, that is uh, the, the better pose libraries. I know um, uh, animationrigs.com, Kevin Freeman's tools um, are that good. There may be some on Creative Crash. I haven't looked on Creative Crash to see if there's any that are that good. Um, but basically what that has to do with is um, the more complex the character is or the more controls are actually uh, in, the contro in the character, the more you're going to actually have to make sure that those um, controls are copied relative to some point in space. Otherwise, um, basically you're not just getting, you're not just dealing with where did he land, you're dealing with what are all those those IK controllers and, and all that stuff? What is their position and orientation in reference to some part in the body, which is in which refers to a, p a point in space? I hope that makes a lot of sense. If it doesn't, you can send me an email and ask me, what the heck are you talking about, Kenny? Damn. Um, uh, and I'll explain it to you a little bit more um, detail. So, but um, for, a, for a bouncing ball, it's actually super, super easy. Um, to do this. So let's jump into Maya real quick. Um, I actually recreated the um, scene 
uh, that this animator um, was talking about. Um, so we have our bouncing ball and it bounces basically, you know, just forgive the animation. I was trying to recreate exactly what this person was, uh, was uh, talking about here. Um, and uh, instead of bouncing down here, it needs to bounce on the box. Well, um, first of all, they started talking, they, they started talking, they talked about um, fixing it in the graph editor. Well, that's fine, but you have to basically um, adjust, um, adjust everything kind of, kind of oddly. Let me show you, let me show you why I, I, I say oddly. Um, we have the translate X is basically controlling this, this um, character's progress through screen. You see that? So he bounces and then bounces over. Okay, it's actually a little slow, um, but we're not gonna judge this animation right now. Um, That just feels better. You should make it higher, then it's not bounce. That it doesn't look like it's bouncing so darn slow. Okay. So, um, but we want it to bounce on the box. So basically, what we have to do is we have to find this key, and then we have to edit these keyframes, or or this keyframe, to make it so that it's bouncing on the box. Okay. And if it and if the translate here's here's one problem. The translate if we adjust it so that the translate is up here then we have a little bit of weirdness going on with the translates, okay? For the most part, you can get away with linear translation in air because it neglects um, wind resistance. And maybe this change in slope right here can be explained by the fact that when it hits something, it loses a little bit of um, uh, uh, forward momentum because of all that friction. But um, that was a very quick, um, way to change it and fix it, but again, only because the only posing really pose change is is controlled by this squash handle. You see that? So this it, this and the squash handle is completely and totally relative to the position of the um, sphere, right? But if this thing had an IK arm attached to it. Well, then you'd be in a lot of trouble, unless, of course, that IK arm um, had a mode where it can actually be IK, but within reference to the root. And um, when I'm making rigs, I like to I like to make it so that you can change the IK arms um, to be either parented to the chest, so you can turn the chest and the arms are are going with it, and then also can be IK on top of that with the root, all right, so the hips, um, or the waist rather, um, same thing. Um, so you can be IK on top, or basically just the, the, the master controller, the, the world mover, um, so that um, as the character moves, the hand basically stays completely in the same spot. How good is that? You ever seen, ever seen someone keep their hand like so perfectly still like that? Isn't that amazing? No, it's all right. Okay, so um, so then so looking back at this, if there was an IK arm, uh, you'd leave it behind, unless of course you had a pose some way a script that was a pose library changer. Um, but uh, Maya actually has some pretty dope tools for doing exactly this. So and, and not so and so um, rather than retime things and 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 try to space things out in the graph editor. You can actually just use a animated, uh, or sorry, editable motion trail, and it's this easy. You just grab, grab that handle, put it where you want it to go, like that. And we're done. And you can adjust the uh, you can adjust the handles, so you can show the tangents. Oh, 
there they are. So you can bias this a little bit. But you know what, the, um, the beads, I always found that the beads were actually a little bit easier to, to, to figure out and to work. I don't know why, but um, there we go. So you can actually change the arc by using these, um, these beads. And I don't even really know what these beads do. In fact, actually, let's take a look. What is this bead actually doing? I guess it's like a tangent handle. I guess it's like a flat handle. It's just weird that they invented a completely new paradigm, beads, that we've never heard before um, in order to try to, you know, give us more control. It's like, here, now you can adjust the beads. And all the animators in the room are like, what the hell is a bead? Anyway, so, and then you probably would want to adjust this a little bit, make this arc just a little bit, uh, a little bit higher. Um, and I like the plateau there. This is a little bit, let me change the tangent again. Let me see here. Let me see here, is this broken? I gotta break this. Not sure if you can change the just the out tangent. That's a good um, hmm. That's a good uh, feature for maybe another version is to move just one tangent handle. But at any rate, um, you get the picture here. Um, is a lot is a lot quicker. You can be very precise with it in um, in the panel, and it's a little bit more fun if you ask me. Um, to, to make that adjustment there. But remember, I'll say one more time, if this had anything attached to it that was taking um, any information from world space at all, um, this method just would not work. It just would not work, right? Because you'd have to have some way of, of, of telling Maya, this is where this object is in world space relative to um, some other object, some other controller, or whatever in the body, and then you can copy that that pose, basically. Um, and some of the better pose library tools um, actually they do a pretty complex calculation. Well, not complex, but it's it's multi-step calculation. Where if you have a character all the way over here doing this pose, and then you move the character all the way over here, right? What it does is is it says, okay, what's the distance from the world origin to, to right here? And now subtract that from every single one of these IK controllers, and that's the new world position relative to the waist. Now, where is the waist? The waist is over here now. Now add that distance back into the, all the rest of the controllers, and that, now that's the new pose. That's basically how it works. So um, it's pretty awesome. Sometimes, uh, so you gotta you gotta look into um, tools that allow you to um, copy and paste poses because that really is what it is. It's it's actually a new pose, and um, but if it's simple, I mean, how fun is that to just like work in panel and, and and move stuff around? It was simple in the graph editor as well, but you still have the kind of two step process, so it's not as fun. Um, and workflow wise, workflow wise, it comes down to knowing at all times what you're putting into your 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 poses. Are you putting positional information? Are you putting are you putting, um, you know, is this where the character needs to hit at this moment on this frame and also hit this pose? I like to stack my keyframes when I'm blocking up. I like to fill them up with as much information as possible. Okay, and then I break out that information. Meaning this is the position, this is also the pose. Sometimes I even build in what I think the overlap is going to be like in that pose in that moment. I won't even like hit the pose, I'll block in some of the fundamentals as well. So if you want to hear more about that, um, you can check out the advanced workflow lecture and also the workflow walkthroughs. All, all three of the workflow walkthroughs I talk about blocking in fundamentals. So it's a good question. Um, I appreciate that. I'm going to save this scene for you so you guys can download it and just play around with that, that tangent if you'd like. And um, 
and uh, have fun with it. That was a great question. Please send in more. If you're on the free trial, or even if, you, if you're if you not on the free trial and you're just um, hanging on the site from now on, uh, and you haven't sent in an Ask Feed Email question, there's no reason not to. You've got to send one in. It is the best way to get the most out of the site. This animator just got a 20 minute video all for themselves, all to themselves. Pretty rad, right? Okay. Hope you're convinced. Um, I think that'll do it. Send your questions to webmaster at kennyroy.com and good luck with your animation. And as always, rock on.